Hi guys, I'm Jay from BornToProduce.com and welcome back to lesson 2 of this brand new Cubase Ultimate Beginners course for Cubase 10. Let's continue making this track from start to finish and in this lesson I'm going to be bringing in a snare. So let's continue in the same sample bank as we did last lesson but this time we're going to type in snare just to filter the results and let's just have a listen to a few of them. Nice big sounding snare, I think I'm going to use that. So in the last lesson, John showed you how to drag and drop the sample into the project. This time we're going to do it slightly differently. We're going to right click and create a sampler track. Now what Cubase does for us very, very kindly is creates a sampler track and also drops the audio sample into the sampler and pops it in this lower zone here. And this just gives us a lot more control of what we can do with this snare. Another benefit of having the audio within a sampler is that we can trigger it via MIDI. Now don't worry if you don't know what this means at the moment, but in layman's terms obviously audio is like a recorded sound, and MIDI is just purely information like note on, note off, that kind of thing. And it just tells something else what to do. In this case it's going to tell the sampler to play the snare. There's lots of other things we can make it do, but we'll, we'll come on to them later. So to start with we need to draw in a MIDI segment and there's a few ways you can do this as with most things in Cubase there's a few different ways to do things. So first of all you can right click and create select I should say the draw tool. Just put that back just for a second. You can also hold down alt and draw it in or you can come up to the toolbar and choose your draw tool there. I'm going to hold down alt or option on a Mac and I'm going to draw in a MIDI event for one bar. Okay, we're going to double click this event to bring this up in the lower zone and you can see that it's flipped over from sampler control to editor and our snare is on C3. It's a little bit loud so let's just quickly bring that down of course so it's a bit more in line with our kick. So the sample is on C3. Now obviously you can trigger this with your mouse on the visual piano here or you can use your musical keyboard or MIDI keyboard I should say. And the reason why that's on C3 is if you come back over to sampler control you can see that the sample is on C3 there. Okay so what we're going to do is draw in some MIDI information just make sure we're on C3 here and the snare usually goes in most genres of music on beats 2 and beats 4. So I'm going to hold down my alt key and I'm just going to draw in some MIDI information which is going to trigger that sample. So we're on C3. If I put it somewhere else it's going to start affecting the pitch as you can hear. You can hear the pitch changing there so we want it to be on C3. And I'm just going to press down Alt and put it on beat 4 as well. And just get the right hand side of it and extend it out so it lasts for one whole beat. Let's just have a listen what we've got so far. So if for some reason your loop is not on, there's a you can just come up here and click the loop activate here. Or there's a simpler way of doing it. You can press Alt and P with your event selected and it will automatically set the loop points, set the loop active and also play your selection as well. So that's Alt P, very useful. If you want to do it manually, of course, you can just adjust the loop points here with these left and right indicators. Okay, so let's have a look at this kick now. We need a bit more, we need a few more kicks in here, obviously, and we're not going to just have the standard 4 4 kick pattern on this down tempo track. We want something a bit more rhythmical, a bit more nice, a bit more funky. So let's copy this over by holding down Alt. And we'll just shorten this off and copy another one over. Let's just have a little listen. Okay, so it's getting there. It's quite a funky pattern. Let's just change the tempo because we're at 120 BPM at the moment and we are making a sort of down tempo track. So I'm just going to double click my tempo and adjust this to 70 BPM. So just type in 70 and press return and now everything's snapped to 70 BPM. Let's just have another listen. 
uh, let's just extend that snare there so it fills in all the way to the next one sounds okay so let's just make this region a little bit longer we're only working on one bar at the moment so let's just highlight everything press ctrl and d press g to zoom out a little bit and now we've got two bars so let's just manually adjust the loop this time so we're working between bars one and three which is obviously two bars and let's just make the second half of this kick pattern slightly different so let's just maybe try the long one and then the short one see what that sounds like Okay, so that's it really, apart from a little bit of housekeeping. So the kick's already been named, so let's just do the snare, double click on snare, type in snare and press shift and enter. And obviously that names the event parts as well as the track. Now colours, we obviously have colours already happening here, but if you don't, then the way to colour is to, let's say you want to highlight this event and colour this event only, come up to here, the color tool and you can see colorize selected events so if you wanted that to be pink you can do but if you want to highlight or color a whole track make sure that none of your events are selected and just come to the track highlight the track and now you'll see colorize selected tracks is highlighted and there we go it colorizes the whole track I'm just going to put that back to how it was so that's the labeling done that's the colors done I want to keep this all nice and tidy because for when we have lots and lots of tracks later on it's going to be a lot easier to deal with and to see what's going on. Okay so that's it for this second video. In the next video we'll start making a melody for our track using Cubase chord pads. Lovely! We'll see you on the next video. See you later!